Thanks. Good morning, dear colleagues. I'm happy to see all of you uh, this early morning. And my presentation is focused on gastric cancer. What do we know today? I will speak about the molecular and genetic aspects that have an impact on the choice of therapy. What is it that we know about the gastric cancer? Gastric cancer is an aggressive uh, disease. We're all aware of that. Number five in the structure of uh, um, oncological disease is about one million new cases are registered every year in the world. And so it's the third reason of death uh, associated with oncology. Annually, we register about 800,000 uh, um, deaths. Uh, men suffer from this disease uh, twice more often than women, and uh, there are different indicators for regions. Most often, uh, Japan, um, uh, Korea, and China show great uh, numbers. And in Western Europe and in North America, the numbers are not that great. So the problem is there. It's topical, and it is far from being resolved today. We all know the uh, classification, the Lauren classification of 1965 that is uh, into the uh, interstitial type. That's 85, 90% of all the cases of gastric cancer according to the WHO uh, classification. This papillary adenocarcinoma, tubular adenocarcinoma, it's about uh, 10, 15 cases. Aggressive forms such as uh, um, squamous. Uh, uh, um, and under uh, non-differentiated carcinoma, and then there are combinations of different uh, variants. And the uh, um, analysis of driver mutations demonstrates the development, the progressing of uh, gastric um, uh, cancer is defined by the uh, numerous uh, um, uh, genes and amplification of those, such as HER2, AGFR, uh, FGFR2, uh, uh, TP53, and all these uh, lead to the activation of the signal uh, routes, and uh, thus uh, the uh, sensitivity to target therapy goes down. As any other adenocarcinoma, uh, the gastric adenocarcinoma will not give us positive results if we're using just the monotarget therapy. And that means we need to uh, exercise some integrated approach. If we take disseminated uh, gastric cancer, then we should definitely speak about the molecular genetic subtypes of it. In 2014, a group studying molecular genetic specifics of gastric cancer uh, revealed in the atlas uh, of uh, uh, cancer genomes uh, four subtypes depending on what particular genes we can see there. Among these subtypes, first of all, there are tumors associated with the virus of Epstein-Barr, not more than 10% altogether, about 9% to be more exact. But these are tumors that are characterized by the hypermethylation of uh, DNA. And so potentially it's a model for the immune therapy, as well as the tumors with the um, microsatellite instability, uh, for which uh, um, a high level of somatic mutations is typical. So potentially, these are models for immune therapy as well. Two other types prevail. There's a genetically stable tumors and the uh, um, uh, tumors with chromosome instability, uh, an oplodia with amplification of genes of uh, uh, tyrosine cas uh, receptors. So this seems to be targets for the uh, therapy. But what do we have as a result? This variety of genetic subtypes represented by the atlas of uh, genome of cancer indicate that for the treatment of each and every patient, we have to select a, an individual approach depending on the molecular subtype. But these subtypes not only help us define this or that type of therapy, but these subtypes help us uh, uh, define the, the prognosis and uh, the best prognosis is for those who have the um, uh, uh, microsatellite instability or Epstein-Barr, but uh, the chromosome instable uh, variant um, um, is much worse for patients. What are the options, uh, therapeutic options we can suggest for the patients? We all know that the standard of the first line of drug therapy is the platinum duplets and uh, uh, duplex and um, it's um, uh, platinum and pyrimidine. Trans uh, Transamuzabab uh, uh, leads to 
high efficiency and uh, with, uh, within a small cohort of patients, young without any extra pathologies, without any complications, and tricycline is in the first line of um, uh, therapy are hardly ever used nowadays. But from standard therapy, what else do we have? We have new molecules, and first of all, these are anti uh, two therapy transmusabab. So why is it so important to define the HER2 status of the patients suffering from gastric cancer? The studies show that the frequency of hyperexpression of HER2 is from 6 to 23 percent, and uh, um, usually it is inter, inter uh, essential the the, um, the the bowel type of cancer, and uh, the prognostic value of this particular factor is not quite clear, but um, it's a 100 predictor of response, and the factor that defines the sensitivity to the target therapy uh, tra- by uh, trastuzumab. So it is HER2 positive. Uh, if we can see the hyperexpression of uh, three crosses, or we can see the hyperexpression uh, two crosses, so it's, there is a doubt that the reaction is supported by the implication of gene. Then these um, patients are to go through target therapy with trastuzumab. Because the study um, uh, carried out by TOGA um, demonstrates that for patients with HER2 positive, trastuzumab as uh, the first line of therapy for the platinum duplex uh, uh, increases the overall um, median of survival. Uh, 16 for patients who were getting the combination with uh, trastuzumab. Uh, so 35% um, goes down the risk of death for these patients. And uh, similar data was obtained for the um, um, non recurrent. Uh, uh, progress, no less the progress occurs with time and there is always a question of what needs to be done. So the her, uh, to, you know, positive gastric cancer is very different from breast cancer. With breast cancer, we can continue anti her to uh, therapy and uh, change the uh, uh, combined therapy. Such molecules as pertuzumab, as uh, lopatinib and others are not better. They do not I- improve the effect of transmusumab therapy. And so the effect of the second uh, line was no better. Why is that happening? Because there are a lot of mechanisms of resistance and the loss of the amplitude of the gene uh, HER2 plays a significant role, the most significant role. So most impressive are the results of the uh, Destiny Gastrix uh, 01 uh, results. And uh, there's um, patients with HER2 positive gastric cancer progressing during the first line with the platin, uh, platinum duplex. Almost 200 patients were ra- randomized uh, um, uh, two to one. Uh, the first group were getting trastuzumab, keristic and the second group was selecting um, uh, chemotherapy. Uh, there are different standards. And uh, the main purpose was uh, to um, examine the frequency of response. And uh, we can see that with those patients who are getting the new molecular of transposomab, uh, the response is uh, 43 against 12%. And so more of the indicators of the overall survival were one point in time uh, higher with these patients. Uh, so it's quite possible that quite soon uh, the um, uh, studies of the second phase will prove the efficiency and uh, the HER2 uh, plus patients will have a new standard of treatment uh, the, uh, on the second line. But the frequency of uh, the response was higher with patients who were getting the immunogaster chemical had uh, uh, two, uh, three crosses. If there was uh, two crosses, then trastuzumab and Ricetan were not um, um, uh, working on them properly, and this needs to be considered in the clinical practice. What other models uh, that we can work with? Uh, these are the um, uh, the, the the signal routes and uh, we um, transmembrane. Uh, proteins, uh, AGFR, and uh, these are used uh, for colorectal um, cancer, and it can be observed in 30% of cases. So, uh, so it seems to be um, uh, very good for target therapy, but hyperexpression of uh, uh, GFR with gastric cancer is a very negative factor for prognosis. And so, what are the studies that we have? The expander, uh, the uh, the expand, uh, the combination of uh, cetacemab um, uh, and uh, capsis. 
And uh, we can see that, unfortunately, this uh, trial is quite negative. Cetuximab does not improve uh, the survival rate for these patients. Uh, similar data was obtained in relation to panitumumab. This indicates that if we had uh, anti-GFR uh, drugs, it's not going to be positive for the gastric patients, uh, gastric cancer patients uh, in the, uh, at the time of progression, maybe because hyperexpression of uh, GFR GFR is not the main um, uh, mechanism for these patients. Uh, the um, gastric tumors are characterized with high mutation burden. And, uh, well, um, uh, melanoma, lung uh, cancer, um, uh, there are other localizations uh, uh, for which um, uh, the immunotherapy is used with great success. And since the results of the treatment of gastric cancer patients are still far from being satisfactory, quite a lot of uh, clinical fundamental trials have been carried out in order to assess the um, efficacy of immune therapy. When we plan immune therapy, of course, we need to know how often this target um, uh, uh, occurs because we're using antibodies. So in 2017, there was a large uh, review published which demonstrated that in 20 up to 60 percent of patients, uh, um, uh, SPDL um, expressed in uh, the cells. Um, but hyperexpression of PDL, um, it was also demonstrated as a very negative factor for the gastric cancer patients. Because if we look at the curves of survival, PDL positive um, uh, patients live um, worse than those uh, who are PDL positive. Because PDL is associated with advanced stages and is a negative prognostic factor. All the pharmacological companies uh, that um, um, work with the drugs carried out a lot of clinical trials, and the uh, first uh, trial, Attraction 2, carried out uh, with the Asian population of patients uh, demonstrates that with immune therapy, we can hardly see um, um, uh, relapse-free survival. And uh, so nivolumab was registered for the Asiatic population. And later, this data was also transferred to the European population of patients. Our favorite uh, pembrolizumab, uh, there was a lot of studies associated with that. Let me mention just uh, the most impressive ones. Uh, keynote uh, keynote uh, uh, 061, the third phase, uh, the efficiency of pembrolizumab and uh, uh, the uh, the first line of therapy, the second line of therapy, sorry, during the first six weeks. You can see the survival line goes down. Then it, uh, there is improvement. It seems then pembrolizumab does not show any advantage as compared to uh, uh, on the uh, as the second line. The analysis of subgroups was most interesting when we examined the um, status and uh, the left uh, curve shows a COC uh, uh, just one and PDL um, more than one. Pembrolizumab um, is losing as compared to Paplitexel. The second one, a COC zero, and here PDL is also about uh, one, and the Pembrolizumab goes up. So most probably Pembrolizumab uh, already has exercised its effect uh, thanks to the um, satisfactory state and the third graph uh, with a cock um, uh uh, zero and uh, PDL one more than ten, but we can see pembrolizumab up effective here. But who can see a progressive uh, and progressing um, um, patient? Uh, uh, with um, uh, CPS uh, one, then um, more than one and ten. No, these are patients with microsatellite um, instability for whom we can recommend that. And so uh, in the uh, MSIH, uh, we can see gastric patients. Nine of these were uh, uh, suffered gastric. Uh, uh, cancer, in fact, and of course we can see here wonderful results and uh, outstanding results indeed. So who has um, as high? Women of uh, old age group uh, with localization in distal areas, multifocal tumors, and very often 
gastrologically the uh, gastric type. Um, and if we look at the studies that uh, carried out the efficacy of pembrolizumab, then MSA high high in patients, as we could see, is at this level, as you can see. Um, in um, keynote uh, 0.59, 4% of patients demonstrated. You can see the frequency of uh, uh, response is uh, quite high, uh, almost 50%. And, um, uh, and 16 against 14, but MSI group, uh, 47%, of course. Uh, half of patients, uh, they respond to therapy, but half of them don't respond, but we want to help everybody. Uh, what kind of variants? Very relevant is a combination of chemotherapy, immunotherapy. Chemotherapy is uh, the immunomodulator representing tumor antigens, and immunotherapy blocked PD-1, PD-2, restoring anti-tumor-specific immunity, and, and uh, so it reinforces uh, the anti-tumorous effect. We are waiting for the result of the clinical trial, and we hope that they will be promising. What else can we uh, target? It's angiogenesis. All the growth factors, they are in uh, the hyperexpression. Also, GFR, hyperexpression of GFR is an uh, unfavorable outcome factor. But on the other hand, it's a potential target module. What kind of uh, medications we have? We have bevacizumab, is not, uh, uh, doesn't work properly. Bevacizumab uh, is un senseless to use. But uh, next factor. Let's look. Rainbow, the second line of therapy. Paclitaxel uh, increases uh, the survival median to two and a half months. Uh, and uh, ORR increases. Progression free survival is increasing. The standard of the second line at the Ramizidumab plus Paclitaxel. Anti angiogenic medications. Uh, tend not to be effective. Uh, I'd like to conclude the treatment of the GIT at the advanced stages is a serious problem for oncologists and for patients. Undoubtedly, for GIT cancer, there is no comprehensive, innovative, effective method of treatment based on driver mutations and immunotherapy. The only predictive biomarker now is expressive HER2 now. Only there are only two medications for GI tumor transmedumab and ramicizumab. What kind of practical application for molecular subtypes? Out of them, uh, Epstein E B V associated uh, tumors the, and MSIH genetically stable tumors. Uh, MSIH uh, must to be. Uh, Define in all their patients with the express PDL1, PDL2. As of the second line of therapy, we use ramicidumab only with the combination with paclitaxel. And initially, you should plan all the line of the therapy so that this combination will be administered to the patient only as a second line of therapy. But we don't give up, we are going further.